Hey everybody, welcome to Something to Talk About. And today, well, we're uh, starting off Prisoner Week is what I'm going to call it. Uh, but first, hi, welcome to Something to Talk About. My name is Taco. That was me talking over my opening. I'm going to start doing that now. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, you won't know this because these videos come out two times a week, but I'm going to be filming a lot today. So pretty much the next like month and a half, it might be from today. <laughs> Who knows? A little behind the scenes for you. Uh, behind the scenes of what? What is this? Well, I talk about a song of ice and fire characters, and we're talking about Willis freaking Manderlead today. So if this looks like I don't do any editing and I say um a lot and all that stuff, it's because I don't, and I do. I don't. <laughs> I don't do any editing. I just kind of, I like the idea of me just like talking to you. It kind of gives me this like ranty feel. And um, yeah, I got these cards to kind of keep on track. And yeah, so I'm calling this my prisoner week. And it, that's what it is. I'm going to talk about two characters who were held captive for a large amount of the A Song of Ice and Fire books. Today's Willis Manderley. And later this week, I'll be talking about Mark Piper. Yeah. All right. But. That's for later. Right now we're talking about Manderleys. I get to talk about the Manderleys. I uh, love the Manderleys. So yeah, like I already said, uh, Willis Manderley, the heir to White Harbor and the prisoner at Harrenhal. Some rough stuff going on at Harrenhal. This video does get a tad rough. So if you are a little sensitive to kind of some, all right, let's just say cannibalism and some other abuse might not be the best bit for you. But the Manderleys, for some reason, we got a lot of cannibalism stuff going on with them, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, I'm so excited to talk about House Manderley. So let's freaking uh, starting off. Willis Manderley. Willis Manderley is a knight of House Manderley. He's the eldest son and heir to uh, Wyman Manderley, Lord of White Harbor. Willis is married to uh, Leona Woolfield. Woolfield, great last name, and has two daughters, Will <laughs> Winifred and Willa. Do these guys just love their W-Y names? I'm just saying. They're all W-Ys. You got, you got Winifred and Willa from Wyman Manderley's The Grandpa. This guy's name is Willis. A lot of Will. Wills. No one's just named Will. Weird. Willis is bald and has a bushy walrus mustache. Fantastic. Which covers his mouth like his father, Lord Wyman, and the younger brother, Sir Wendell. That's not even a Y. That's Wendell. Wow. What a, what a, the black sheep of the family. Willis is immense, an immense fat man. And knight, the knight is almost too big to ride a horse. His dad is lord too fat to sit a horse. Um, I'm not bad shaming. I'm a chubby chubster myself. But, um, but his dad can't sit a horse. This guy's almost there. You know why? Because he's not lord yet. As soon as he gets that, uh, that, that merman court, uh, he's probably going to be like, you know what? Let's back another 50 on why? Because my horse can handle <laughs> My horse can't handle it if I do 50 more. All right. Willis is quiet and formal, and his wife, wife Leona, is devoted to him. Aw. Um, Willis's clothes are food-stained, <laughs> and he clasps his cloak with a silver and sapphire trident. That makes sense. Uh, why, does, why a trident? Well, because... Their sigils, a uh, freaking merman holding a trident. House Manderley of White Harbor is a noble family in the north whose seat is Newcastle in the city of White Harbor. Their uh, blazon is uh, a white merman with dark green hair, beard, and tail carrying a black trident over a blue and green field. Or a blue green, not blue and green. It's blue green. The Manderleys originated from uh, uh, Dustinbury in the Reach, but were forced to exile by House Gardner. And I also think the Peaks had something to do with it, too. The Knights of Winter, House Stark of Winterfell, accepted the Manderleys in the north and granted them Wolfsden, where the newcomers developed the uh, prosperous city of White Harbor. So they showed up. The Starks are like, you guys can come up here. And they're like, hey, can we keep practicing their gods? They're like, whatever, just don't mess with our trees. He's like, hey, you want this old, nasty castle called the Wolf's Den? And they're like, eh, nah, we'll make a new one. What are you guys going to call it? The new castle? Oh, okay. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? We'll also make the biggest city in the north, White Harbor. White Harbor's great. I would so visit White Harbor if it was real. All right. 
So uh, that was my little bit of history for uh, the displaced House Manderly. I love House Manderly. Okay, there, I got to talk about it. Let's talk more about Willis. So answering the call, Sir Willis, don't you guys love the art by Sir Hearts a lot? Every time I get to use it, Sir Hearts a lot, I'm excited. Sir Willis commands the men from a White Harbor when Rob Stark calls his banners at the end of the first book. As his father, Lord Wyman Manderly, is too fat to ride a horse any longer and remains to uh, um, look after the city. So Wyman stays at the city. The uh, Manderly forces a march from White Harbor to Mount Kalen, where Rob is gathering his troops before heading south. Willis is accompanied, apart from his younger brother, Sir Wendell, by Catelyn Stark, Roger Cassell, and Brendan Tully, who all arrived by ship in White Harbor coming from the Vale of Arran. Catelyn likes the brothers well enough. When uh, they arrive near Mount Kalen, Willis reminds the camp while uh, Wendell rides on with Catelyn, remains in camp while Wendell reminds on, uh, rides on with Catelyn uh, to the castle to greet Rob. Sorry, I started stuttering there. So what did I just say? Well, Catelyn heads down south to King's Landing with Sir Roger Cassell, and then eventually kidnaps Tyrion, starts a war, heads over to the Vale, and then goes, I'm assuming from Goldtown, from the Vale by ship with her uncle Brendan and then Roger Cassell, and they arrive in White Harbor. Right when they arrive in White Harbor, Rob calls the banners. So since Rob's heading down with the rest of his army to Mount Caelan, they just decide, why don't we go meet him? And that's when, like, Willis's younger brother Wendell's like, hey, Lord Rob Stark, look who I got. Is that your mama and your uncle? Well, her uncle, great uncle. Yeah, so that's it. We kind of get our first interactions with the uh, uh, with the Manderleys from Catelyn's point of view, and she likes them. So if she likes them, I like them. That's it. All right. Uh, marching to the Twins, the northern host of the, uh, no, the <clears throat> sorry, the northern host marches south and arrives at the Twins, where they are greeted by Stefan Frey, who invites Rob to the Twins in the name of Old Ass Walder Frey. That's his nickname. Rob's a bannerman, uh, distrusting Walder, advises Rob putting himself in the, or, yeah, against Rob putting himself in the hands of the Lord of the Crossing, with Willis suggesting that Walder should come out of the castle and treat with Rob in plain sight of both, uh, men's, of both men's forces. So Willis is like, why doesn't he come out here and talk to us? Uh, it is ultimately decided that Catelyn will go into the twins and talk to Lord Walder. After an agreement with Walder has been found, uh, he's got to marry one of his uh, family members, the uh, Northern Army splits, and Willis comes under the command of Roose Bolton. Ooh, I don't know if you want him as your commander. All right. <laughs> Just saying. The Lord of the Dread Fort marches his troops south along the King's Road uh, to engage with Lord Tywin Lannister's main host at the Trident as a diversion for Rob who rides southwest to lift the siege of River Run. So what did I just say? Rob breaks up at the Twins, and he's like, Roos, you take them, march on the King's Road, everyone's going to think it's our main host. But take, like, eight people. <laughs> and he's like, okay, what are you guys going to do? And he's like, I'm going to go take River Run. And capture me a King's like, Don't worry about me, Roos. March on the King's Road, it'll be fun. <laughs> Oh, uh, Rob kind of screwed him there. But I like the what they ended up doing. They got River Run back. It was nice. Uh, <laughs> but too bad for Willis. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Who rides southwest to let the siege of River Run? I already said that. Lord Bolton's forces suffer a defeat against Tywin's forces and a bunch of mountain clansmen in the Battle of the Green Fork, which Willis is captured by Tywin. So the Battle of the Green Fork is the battle where Tyrion just shows up with a bunch of the mountain clansmen and then Tywin, like a jerk, puts them at the vanguard and uh, they think they're going to be running into the main host of the Starks, but they're not. They just run into a little bit of guys. And Roos escapes, but Willis doesn't. So that's when Willis gets captured. And this is prisoner week, so he's going to be captured for a bit. So uh, where was I? So now... 
the prisoner at Harrenhal, Lord Tywin Lannister offers a trade to trade Willis held captive at Harrenhal to his father without ransom if Lord Wyman withdraws his support to Rob Stark, who is now King of the North. Of course. Uh, Wyman refuses, however. Yeah. Why would he? Hey, we'll give you your son back. Well, what do you got to do? You got to trade your king. Eh, we're actually doing pretty good, so I'm not going to do that. In reply to the Norse peace terms submitted by Rob Stark via Cleos Frey. Um, all right. If you guys want me to cover Cleos Frey, just ask. Okay. Uh, Tywin Lannister offers to trade Willis and uh, Heron Carr Stark. For uh, Willem Lannister in exchange for and in exchange for prisoners. So, yeah, when they're trying to get prisoner exchange, Willis's name is brought up a lot. Well, in Harrenhal, the prisoners taken from the Battle of the Green Fork are housed in the upper chambers of the Tower of the Dread. Most of them are given freedom of the castle when they pledge not to attempt to escape. Thus, Willis can start haunting, I love the name, the word haunting here, the kitchen. So he starts haunting the kitchen for food, where he is always looking for morsels of food. Arya Stark learns about a, quote, fat lordling from Hot Pie, because Hot Pie is working in the uh, kitchens. Arya spots Willis walking around the walls of Harrenhal with Lord Tywin and three maesters, although she does not know his name. Yeah, she doesn't know who she's talking or looking at. She just knows it's a, a big lord from the north. Uh, Tywin's host eventually deports Harrenhal. The brave companions change side during the War of the Five Kings and loose to Roose Bolton with the fallen Harrenhal. So Tywin leaves. And then Varga Hoat is holding it. And then Roos comes in and goes, I want it. And then it, the uh, Brave Companion switch sides to Roos. Roos takes it, gets Willis out of prison. So that's the, so, you know, he's no longer a prisoner for now. All right. Uh, back in action. Uh, Willis back in action. Willis is part of Lord Roos Bolton's army when it leaves Harrenhal to Varga Hoat and the Brave Companions. Uh, they move north to cross the Trident, so they leave it to Roos, or to Vargo again. So Vargo's again in charge of uh, Harrenhal. So they move north to cross the Trident at the Ruby Ford to eventually join forces with Rob Stark at the Twins on the occasion of Lord uh, Edmure Tully's wedding with Rosalind Frey. Wait, 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 wait. What wedding is that? Oh, yeah. That's the freaking red wedding. So, Bruce takes over Heron Hall, frees Willis, starts marching north. Willis with him. They're going to go hit up the red wedding, which, you know, doesn't bode well for anyone who's going to the red wedding. When Bruce's army arrives at the river, the ford is impassable. Uh, and Roos has to ferry his men across in small boats. Willis and the uh, knights from White Harbor serve as rear guard. That's got to be on purpose. The uh, of the oper during the operation. Okay. When two thirds of the force have crossed the Trident, the rest, mainly Locke, Nori, and Burley men, are uh, suddenly attacked by Lannister forces. Uh oh leading the fighting at the fords of the Trident. Willis tries to rally the men the best he can, but they come under attack by heavy uh, cavalry led by Gregor Clegane, uh -oh, who drives the defenders into the water. Mainly, many men drown and die in the fighting or flee. Others are captured, including Willis. Yeah, he's captured again. He was just freed. And then it, they start heading north, and Roos is like, all right, let's cross the river. And he's like, hey, Willis, what? Stay back there. Why? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, just stand on the rear guard. All right. And then he's handing her in the wheel, rear guard, and then Roos and the most of his men get over, and then he's like, <clears throat> and Gregor Clegane's like, da -da! and boom, captive again, just like that. Well, meeting with Rob Stark at the Twins, Lord Bolton claims that he was unable to help the men on the South Shore and Walder Frey then betray Rob and Red Wedding his ass. Yeah, they're Red Wedding him. What jerks. Rob's dead. Willis is back. 
uh, at Heron Hall. Man, it's just not a good day for Willis. Uh, prisoner at Heron Hall. Dabo Seaworth is sent to uh, White Harbor to negotiate a possible alliance of uh, House Manderley and Stannis Baratheon. Yeah, so now we're going to jump in between um, Feast for Crows and Dance of Dragons. But Dabo shows up at White Harbor. First he hangs out with the sister man. And then he shows up at White Harbor and he's like, hey, you guys want to support Stannis? Hmm? Hmm? Upon his arrival to the city, Davos learns that the Lannisters still keep Willis as prisoner, whereas Davos thought that both of Lord Wyman's sons were dead. Nope, Willis is still alive. That's why we're still talking. Davos receives um, this as a bad omen for his mission because the captivity of Willis makes Wyman susceptible to blackmail. Wyman acts... Uh, acts hostile in their negotiations in the Merman court. And uh, Willis's wife, Leona, accuses Davos of trying to stir up more treason. Although the Onion Lord realizes that she is speaking out of fear in the presence of Rhaegar, Jared, and Simon Frey, Wyman orders Davos arrest and execution. Yeah. So Davos shows up at the Merman's court. Willis isn't here. He's still held captive. And he goes, hey, you guys want to join Stannis? And they're like, no. And Freys are there. There's like Rhaegar, two other dudes, right? Freys. And they're hanging out there. So, of course, in front of the Freys, Wyman has to go, no, I don't want to betray you. Do we need betraying? Uh, we love our friends of Frey. Of course, they don't. Uh, so, now, now we're talking something else. The Iron Throne negotiates with Wyman Manderley about poss uh, the possibility of White Harbor abandoning the North cause and rallying behind the new warden of the North, uh, Roos Bolton. Wyman suggests he wed off both of his granddaughters to Freys and hope open his harbor to ships of the crown, but only if Willis is returned to him safely. The small council and queen regent uh, Cersei Lannister demand that Wyman execute Davos Seaworth, oh, held prisoner by Lord Manderley, as a token of goodwill, although Frey, um, yeah, token of goodwill. Although Frey witnesses inform uh, Grand Maester Pycelle that Wyman has executed Davos, Cersei is not sure that Willis is still alive or prisoner at Harrenhal as a message is sent um in this regard, uh, received no reply. What did I just say? So we're just talking about negotiations. Wyman or Willis wasn't really brought up in that slide. Or he was brought up, but he wasn't part of it. So they capture Davos, and then they're talking to the small council and Queen Regent, and they're like, hey, give us Willis. And they're like, kill Davos. And they're like, sure. And they kill Davos. But during that, Cersei doesn't really know if they have Willis. <laughs> So let's find out. Did they got Willis? Yeah, they still got Willis. When Cersei sends uh, her uh, resisting brother, Sir Jamie Lannister, to lift the siege of River Run, he uh, lifts, uh, lists re-establishing order at Heron Hall and getting hold of Willis on the way as an additional reason. So she does as additional reasons why Jamie needs to attend the personal matter. Um, Personally, to the matter. Okay, I said that all messed up. Uh, so she's like, hey, go go take care of River Run. And Jamie's like, but I don't want to. And she's like, no, go. And it, then she's like, oh, and also on your way, um, take care of Heron Hall, get us Willis. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I don't want to. Upon Jamie's arrival at Heron Hall, the mountains men tell him of Vargo Hote's death after Gregor Clegane's capture of Harrenhal. Rayford, as in uh, Raph the Sweetling, and Shitmouth, yeah, that's the dude's name, explained that a fat prisoner continuously asked for food. So Gregor had Vargo's flesh fed to the captives as roast goat. Oh, here's, here's that cannibalism thing. So <laughs> that old chestnut... So, um, yeah, Gregor Clegane and has Vargo Hote killed, and 
Also, there's some other stuff that he does. He he tortures Vargo pretty bad. But Vargo Hote's called the goat because he has the black goat, the death uh, in uh, where he's from. And uh, Kor, was he Kohorik? I believe so. But anyways, um, yeah, so he has, um, he, everyone calls him the goat. So everybody, not like the goat as in the greatest of all time, but no, they call him goat. And because of that, when Willis is like, I'm hungry. I want food. They're like, we got roast goat for you. And he's like, ah, screw it. <laughs> All right. So uh, Willis is brought to uh, uh, Jamie in a ragged and filthy condition, broken in spirit. When he tells uh, Willis that he will be escorted to the maiden pool and put on a boat to White Harbor, Willis collapses in tears. It takes four men to lift him up again. Yeah, he's super happy. He's been captive like the whole war uh, in Heron Hall. Harrenhal's a rough freaking place, especially during the war. <laughs> I mean, it just normally has curses that kills everybody who sits there, but during war, it's rough. You got mountains men, you got freaking brave companions, Roos, just a lot of messed up stuff going on down there. Um, Jamie sends Willis to Maidenpool with a party that includes some brave companions and is under the command of Sir Ron Connington. I talked about uh, Ron Con before, so... Uh, if you want to watch that video about Ronna Connington, go do that. I have one. All right. Uh, yeah. Whom Jamie wants to get rid of after Ronna made insulting remarks about uh, his former patrol, Brianna Tarth. Yeah, which I talk about in that video. But Ronna's like making fun of Brianne and Jamie likes Brianne. So he's like, you know what? Get out of here. Uh, take some mountains men and other people I don't like. Take Willis Manderley and go to Maiden Pool. Because I don't like you. Go. That's what he does. All right. So let's talk about some feasting. All right. Free at last. Free at last. When uh, Willis returns to White Harbor from Maiden Pool, his father holds a welcoming feast in uh, Newcastle. During the feast, Wyman uses... So now Willis is back home and they're feasting. Wyman uses the need for digestion <laughs> after he ate too much as an excuse for a secret meeting with Davos. So he's like... I gotta go talk to Davos. What's the excuse I'm gonna use? I ate too much, I'm gonna go poo. And everyone's like, that checks out, man. You're a big dude, it probably takes you a while. It does. And then he just goes and talks to Davos. <laughs> um, yeah. So he informs him about the background of his long imprisonment in the Wolves Den and to apologize for it. Uh, the late Tywin Lannister, so Tywin's dead, had written to uh, Wyman, uh, listing conditions for the safe return, mainly that Lord Manderley bent his knee to the Iron Throne and to the new Warden North, Roos Bolton. If Wyman refuses, uh, Willis would have been executed and White Harbor would be stormed and sacked with the Manderleys extinguished. And they're not putting up with that again. Wyman explains he had to fake Dav Davos's execution using another prisoner to guarantee the safe return of Willis and that he could not reveal this to him earlier. Wyman also apologizes for his daughter-in-law pointing out that Willis or yeah, Willis is the whole life of Lady Leona. Yeah. So that's why Lady o Leona was like, no, screw up Davos because she loves her man and she misses Willis and he's got the big walrus mustache and you know, I don't blame her. <laughs> so, uh, everyone likes that big Wolverine's mustache, right? Um, so yeah, he goes and apologizes, like, sorry for keeping you hostage. We had to fake your death. It's all been a ruse. Sorry, bro. All right. Um, and then he's like, hey, can you go to St Skagos to go and get Rick on Stark? I guess. <laughs> At Winterfell, where the wedding of Ramsay Bolton and Arya Stark, fake Arya, huh? Jane Poole, uh, has taken place. Wyman serves some huge pies, most likely containing fray meat. Hosty and Frey questions Wyman on the disappearance of the three uh, Frey env envoys. Where are, my, where are the Freys, Wyman? Suggesting foul play by Wyman in this context. He points out that the three were Wyman's guests at White Harbor and brought to, uh, his son home. So yeah, the Freys bring home Willis. And then Wyman's like, hey, guys, thanks. You want a feast? He's like, yeah. And then he's like, see you guys later. 
and no one ever sees them later. <laughs> All right. Um, do, 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 do. Wyman is dismissive, stressing that whereas the phrase and merely returned Wendell's bones. Yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't bring home Willis. I screwed that up. They brought home Wendell's bones. Willis comes later. Uh, screwed that up. Sorry. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. From the Red Wedding. And it was Tywin who returned the surviving Willis. Yeah, see, it was Tywin, not the phrase. So he's like, you guys didn't even do it. Tywin did. That's why I'm eating your siblings. <laughs> okay. Now we're done. That's Willis' story. So Wyman's up at, uh, at White Harbor. Willis is finally not captive again. This is a long vid, but I'm not done yet. Because I want to talk about a connection. Right? And that is the House of Cannibals. <laughs> so I, uh, I do a deep dive um, into these characters when I'm working on them look for any symbolism or fan theories or anything like that that I can kind of bring up. And yeah, this is what I found. A Reddit user named A. Ansrong, I guess. A. Ansrong. Ansrong. Uh, brought up the connection between the Manderleys and cannibalism. So examples. So there's a lot of connections. Wyman most likely cooking up those three Freys into pies and eating them at the Red Wedding. So we don't know for sure if um, Frey pies is for sure. But I'm not even a, like, I don't really buy into theories much unless, like, I, I know for a fact it's true. This one is, like, 99% true, right? I think so. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, Willis being fed roast goat at Harrenhal, most likely being Vargo Hote. Yeah, so Willis straight up is a cannibal. Whether he wants to be or not, he is. Uh, we know that one. Most, well, we're pretty, like, not, more than 99 on that one. Lastly, Wyman sending Davos to Skagos to find Rickon. Um, Skagos being famous for his cannibals. I'm not sure the significance of cannibalism. Uh, maybe it's just coincidence. Or maybe just like uh, the Skagos thing is, uh, and the other two are connected. So maybe it's significant, but I don't know what we're trying to be told of why these guys, why it's important of the connection between Manderleys and cannibalism. And I do think just the fact that he sent Davos to Skagos isn't actually part of it. I think that's just coincidence. But the other two are very blatant. Like, Maybe the roast goat thing is just so we connect Manderleys with cannibalism. So then when we when Wyman whips out his big fray pies, we go, hey, it's Manderleys eating people again. So, yeah. Anyway, so that's just a weird connection of that family, Willis specifically, and cannibalism. That's very fun. That's, <laughs> that's, what a fun connection. We So that's it, guys. This is a long video. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, I'm going to be filming a lot of videos today. So this is a good one to start off with. And yeah, let me know what you thought of uh, Willis Manderley. Let me know if there's any characters you want me to cover. And yeah, click like, subscribe if you haven't been here. I crank out two of these a week. And sometimes I got other vids too. So yeah, enjoy. And whatever you do, um, don't be a cannibal. All right? It's not It's not a good look. Okay? Um, and if if... Somebody offers you roast goat. Be like, is this actually goat? Hmm? All right. Have a good one. Peace.